Hello everybody, it's Anthony Geisen here, and originally I was going to make this video titled something like Goodbye Sony, Hello Fujifilm, but when I started to, you know, make some bullet points and really think about it, it kind of evolved more into a discussion about gear acquisition syndrome and kind of like consumerism as a whole. So I wanted to just briefly discuss why I'm switching camera systems and why I feel like I need to downsize like 75% of my camera gear. So a couple months ago, Sarah and I really sat down and decided that we wanted like really hardcore save for a house. And that made me think, you know, how do I get some, you know, extra money on top of everything? And I instantly think of, first of all, all of the camera gear I have and most of the stuff I have bought way, way less than what its retail value is, but I figured this would be a good place to start um, in looking like what I can get rid of maybe. And when I did start to look, I realized that there was a lot of camera gear that I haven't even used for the last year, two years. And the idea of getting rid of it really, it almost made me feel just lighter already. And I hadn't even sold any of it yet. And so I'm, I've for the last couple of months been excited and selling off big portions of my camera collection. One of the big portions of my camera set when I was looking at the dollar amount was the Sony system that I have, which, you know, I have a handful of lenses and the, the Sony a7 III body. And realistically, I only use this Sony camera, which I'm using right now to record YouTube videos. And that's why I've kept it around the last, you know, two years. I don't like taking it out to shoot pictures with. I, I don't find it enjoyable. I have what I'd consider a rather large nose. So when I'm taking pictures, if it's you know right in the center there, my nose touches the screen, it's just not enjoyable. But with Leicas, for example, you know it's, it's right there on the side and I can use it. And so a few months ago when I started deciding to take pieces out of my camera collection to sell, to save that money, I then started looking into um, other camera systems that could potentially replace my Sony system. And there's basically three checkpoints I needed for it. It's one, it's got to be fun. I got to enjoy using it. Um, granted, like the Sony camera system, technically on paper, you know, they're like some of the best cameras. They're really good. They have all the specs you could ever want, but I just don't like using them. The other thing the camera needed is to have 4K video, 30 FPS or whatever. It's basically all I need for YouTube. As you can tell, my production value is insane. I don't have crazy videos. I just need something to get me by for like the next year or so while I'm trying to budget. And the other uh, requirement was that it needed to have autofocus. And so like my Leica M240 being a digital camera, it doesn't check very many of those boxes. It, it checks the fun and like enjoyable, I wanna take it out and use it, but it doesn't check, I mean, it does video, but I wouldn't use that to make YouTube videos. It's pretty bad. I, I don't think I'm ever gonna use any video from this camera, it's not good. And it doesn't have autofocus because, you know, every now and then you do need something with autofocus. You wanna set it up on a tripod and you wanna take pictures of something and, you know, you just need sometimes some autofocus. I was looking around and I, what I stumbled on and remembered was the Fuji X-Pro3. And I really like that because it, it kind of combines a Leica with like some autofocusing elements. Um, it's not actually rangefinder, but it's got an optical viewfinder. And what I really liked about the X-Pro3 was the fold down screen, which had like almost like a waist level finder, which um, if you can see, I have like my roll leaf flex up there, even the Hasselblads. I love waist level finders and I love like an optical finder that's off to the side because I, I wanted that X-Pro3, but then I thought it's it goes for about the same amount of money as my Sony. And if I'm going to, you know, why would I want to do that trade? It's I, I would be getting the enjoyment factor, but it would still just do the same kind of video and the same autofocus as my Sony. So I didn't think it was worth it. And then I looked into the X-Pro2, which is substantially cheaper and has all of those features as well. It does 4K video 30. It's enjoyable to use, at least what I thought it would be based off my preferences in taking pictures, and it has autofocus. So it checked all those boxes and it checked the extra box, which was it's affordable. So for the last like two months or so, I've been you know checking the used markets, keeping my eye on it, and I finally did find a used uh, Fujifilm X-Pro2. 
What I actually really like about this X-Pro2 is it's got the 18 millimeter viewfinder and this one that I got, it came with for free an 18 millimeter lens. So for 700 bucks, I got the camera body and the lens, which that price alone is usually what these bodies go for. So it was like getting this 18 millimeter lens for free, which was one of the lenses I wanted. Quick little downsides I've noticed in the first like week or two of using this is the Fuji 18 millimeter lens is a little noisier than I would have expected. It's comparing to some of my Sony lenses like the Zeiss 35 millimeter. This lens right here, it's dead silent. This one, you can kind of hear it grinding around and moving and adjusting the aperture and stuff like that and focusing. Indoors, it was noticeable, but I took it out on the streets and took pictures and I couldn't really tell it was making any noises then. So, you know, it, it checks all the boxes I needed. And that kind of made me really think more about all of my camera stuff I have. Do I really need the latest and greatest of anything? I, I tried out the Nikon Z6 II, which if you saw one of my recent videos, I won it in a camera lot that I paid $195 for and there was a Nikon Z6 II in there. And you would think, oh, that's a, replace your Sony stuff and just keep the Nikon. But I can't, I ran into some of the similar issues using that. The, the center viewfinder, the lenses are so expensive, that kind of stuff. It, it was nice in the hand to hold, it was ergonomic, but I just didn't, ever think I would want to take it out. So I sold it and it's going towards saving towards a house. And as is the Sony soon here, I am going to be selling this. Something like this Tamron lens for my Sony, the 28 to 75. I already sold this. It's going to be shipped off today. This alone pays for the entire Fuji and lens combo I have right here. And so it really got me thinking, what am I using? Do I need to keep all this stuff? Is it kind of bringing me enjoyment, like Marie Kondo kind of thing here? Um, and so I went through my whole entire camera collection and just started pulling stuff out. And that's where I came about the like getting rid of 75% of my stuff. I went into my point and shoot drawer and I opened that up and I had 15 point and shoot cameras in there and I ended up selling or have listed 12 of them. I'm only gonna keep three for now, um, like a bunch of the Leica point and shoots gone. I haven't used them. I've used them once or twice. Can't keep them. The Contax T2 pretty much covers all my bases. I have a waterproof one, one of the Canon WP1. I'm gonna keep that. And then probably also just this Olympus. You know, I got even good ones too that I'm getting rid of, like the Konica Big Mini F. I don't use it, it's gone. I have tons of other Olympuses that are going. I have. This cannon right here, it's got to go to like the night owl or whatever they're called. Gone. I don't use them. I don't need them. I opened my SLR film drawer in my cabinet here and I had 17 SLR cameras in there. And realistically, I only ever need three of those. Uh, so I'm only going to keep three and then plus the, the three sentimental family SLR cameras that I've collected. Those don't count. That's just kind of like memory stuff. And here's another example. I have three Hasselblads up top here. I can only use one. So two of those and one of the extra lenses are gonna go. I don't need them. And it really got me thinking about a lot more stuff in my whole setup and just in my life, what like consumerism has done. I've held on to so many things. If you've seen my channel before, years and years ago, you know I collected video games and I still have this huge video game collection that's just sitting in boxes. And going through my camera stuff really made me think I don't need to hold on to a lot of this stuff either. Some of it, I sure, I want to hold on to sentimental value. A bunch of those Super Nintendo N64 games I had when I was a kid and I still have in the box. I'm going to keep on, hold on to that stuff. And so just like a bunch of the video game stuff and camera stuff, it's going to get out of here. I don't want to hold on to as much stuff. Other aspects of my setup. I, I used to have a MacBook Pro, a, a pretty nice 15-inch one. And I sold that. For like half of what I sold it for, I got a Mac Mini and it kind of blows that 15 inch out of the water. So for my last few months, my mentality has just been consolidate, hold on to what I need, get rid of what I don't. And I know that since we live in like a capitalist society, consumerism is pushed on us heavily. And being a lens and video kind of reviewer on YouTube, I, I also, review things for you to buy. When you're watching a lens review, it shouldn't be buy this, buy it. It should be, if you're interested in it, know what you're getting yourself into. 
understand what you're buying and is that something that you want to add to your camera collection. I'm excited to be using a digital camera that isn't Leica. I've been, since I've had this M240, I've loved it. I love it. I would love to have an M10, but I need one, the funds, which are just not happening right now because I'm saving. And two, it doesn't have autofocus and so it couldn't replace my M240. And it doesn't do video either. I've just remembered the M10 doesn't do video. And so this Fuji X-Pro2, it, it really is a dream. It's, it's kind of like my ideal digital camera. If I could take one digital camera and use that for the next five years, it might be this over my M240 just because it's, it's so versatile. It's, it's very compact and it fits all of the stuff that I need. And I, I took it out and I really enjoyed using it. The first day I did a photo walk with this, I knew right away, I'm like, this is the kind of digital camera I want. And I never had that kind of feeling when using the Sony system. After going through like all of my camera stuff, dozens and dozens of cameras and lenses that I'm selling and getting rid of, it's, it's kind of made me wanna sell all of my Leica M mount lenses and get just a 28 millimeter, 35 and 50 millimeter Summicron. But as I'm saying that I'm in my head and I'm kind of just screaming too, don't do it. Selling everything you have probably couldn't afford those three lenses alone. And I'm trying to save money here. So that might be something in another year or so I do where I really try to consolidate my kit down to an M3 and M6, a digital M and three lenses. And that way I can have one lens on each body and that's it. That would be the dream scenario. But till then, I'm gonna be sticking with M240 and this X-Pro2 and then my M6 for my film 35 millimeter stuff. And of course the contacts is a point and shoot. And then one Hasselblad as my medium format. Oh, and then my Roll Eye Flex. I gotta keep that too because I freaking love that. So, you know, it, it's hard to get rid of stuff, but I, I really do think you should maybe take a look at your stuff if you're feeling weighed down by all your camera gear. Take a look at what you have and see if there's anything you can get rid of that will make you feel, you know, less bogged down by what you have. Uh, I recently watched a Peter McKinnon video and he was talking about having a bunch of gear and even if you do pick the right tools that you're bringing, you still might feel like you're leaving something behind and that is just another stress on top of it. And so that's kind of my idea behind having just the 28, 35 and 50 millimeter Summicrons is I would basically bring them all anytime and I would never feel like I've left something behind at home. But for now, the X-Pro2 pretty much covers everything I need at a very affordable budget price point. Um, and so I'm just looking to get rid of more of this camera gear and video game stuff. Uh, just to save money for a home and to feel a little lighter in the process too. And I'm feeling a lot better. I was a little concerned, you know, letting go of certain camera items or certain video games or anything like that. I might feel regret about it, but so far I have not regretted anything. The only, there's a very few amount of camera things that I feel like I would regret ever selling. Um, and most of them are Leica. So those aren't going anywhere. Thank you so much for watching this long-winded video. I hope you enjoy and I'll see you next time.